Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the MLB slate on DraftKings for Friday, May 25th. Uh, we have a 14 game slate tonight on this Friday. Uh, loaded pitching slate, got some course field on this slate as well. So got bats we want to pay it for, got pitchers we want to pay it for. Looks like there are five pitchers over 10K. Starting off with Max Scherzer, uh, and then it just goes down. The talent level uh, is loaded on this slate. Paxton, Severino, uh, got Kluber. Noah Syndergaard, even under 10K, you got Corbin, Manaya, Dallas Keuchel. Uh, really loaded slate, ton to talk about. Uh, but before we do get started talking and looking at pitchers and bats for today, make sure you guys drop a like on the video. Uh, if you have not subscribed, uh, subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. So that way you won't miss out on any of my new uploads. Uh, but yeah, starting up top at pitcher, we got Max Scherzer, who is 14K on the slate. Uh, definitely gets a great matchup with the Marlins. This Marlins team is a terrible team offensively. Uh, they're not getting any respect from Vegas here. They only have a 2.7 implied run total for today. I think Max is a great play on the slate, uh, but he is very expensive. He's $14,000, and I'm just not sure he's worth that price tag on the slate when we do have other options. Uh, you got Severino, who I think could be a pivot away from uh, Max Scherzer. He is 11-2 versus the Angels. you got Kluber, who's really cheap. Not a great matchup against the Astros, but Kluber is only 10800 and then you got Noah Syndergaard, who I absolutely love here at just $10,500. You get uh, $3,500 in savings going down from Scherzer to Syndergaard. And it's possible that Syndergaard uh, does outscore Scherzer today. And I do like Syndergaard as my SP1. Uh, with Scherzer's price tag, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to pay up for him on this slate. I just feel like he's a, a little bit too expensive. And especially with other options on this slate that we can go to, I don't think Max is necessary. Uh, if you were to play him, I would definitely say that's okay. But... Uh, just at that price, I, I want some bats on this slate. I kind of want to pay for bats or at least get a little bit of exposure to Coors Field. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that playing Max. So going with Syndergaard gives you savings. You get a guy with upside here and a good strikeout matchup. Uh, I believe Syndergaard faced this Brewers team earlier this year and just went out and dominated. It was at home, but uh, he did put up 32 drafting points versus the Brewers. Only pitched five and one-third inning, but got 11 strikeouts, uh, 32 drafting points. Road matchup here in Miller Park. You don't love that, but... The strikeout matchup is definitely there. There are a lot of strikeouts in this Brewers lineup. Really like Syndergaard here. I think he is a great play on the slate, a play that has a lot of upside. Could definitely outscore Max. Uh, he's my favorite SP1 to pay for, especially when you get those savings. You get that cheap price uh, of just 10500 And then SP2, I uh, really like Patrick Corbin here versus the Athletics. He's only 9700 He is really cheap in my opinion. Given this matchup, this is definitely a good strikeout matchup. This Athletics team does strike out a lot uh, versus lefties and righties. If we look at their projected lineup, there are guys that will strike out in this lineup pretty much from top to bottom. There is some power in this lineup. Uh, guys that do hit can hit home runs versus lefties like Chapman, uh, Mark Cannon, even Chad Pinner has some power versus the lefties. These are still guys that will K a lot. Great pitchers park here in Oakland. Uh, Manai, or sorry, Patrick Corbin going to be getting a good park upgrade traveling from Arizona to Oakland. Good pitchers park there. I uh, love Corbin here at 9,700. We've seen the kind of upside that this dude has, the kind of strikeout upside he has. 12 strikeout game against the Dodgers, 11 Ks against the Padres. Uh, Patrick Corbin definitely has 10 K upside here versus this, versus this athletics team. And going with him in center guard still leaves you almost 3,800 remaining per player, uh, which I think can be worked around today. You can still get some course field exposure going center guard and Corbin. Uh, so that is what I'm going to be doing. If you wanted to go like max and then look for a cheaper SP2, uh, I think going max and maybe like uh, uh, Ross Stripling at 7,200, that's a little bit more than Syndergaard Corbin, but you could definitely go max Stripling. Uh, I do like that combo if you don't want to do Syndergaard Corbin. Uh, looking at the other expensive pitching options, I uh, definitely think Severino is a good tournament play here. If you're not playing max or Syndergaard, I like Severino. Uh, Paxton, I probably won't be going there at 11,900 versus the Twins. I think I'd just rather play Severino or get up to max or go down to Syndergaard. And then Kluber against the Astros, you could go there in tournaments, but I don't like picking on the Astros. They're just such a good offensive team. Not a ton of strikeouts in their lineup either. Probably will be shying away from Kluber. And then looking at the other SP2s, 10K and below, that we could go to. Uh, Manaya's kind of really been struggling lately. Although this Diamondbacks team isn't great offensively, and they have been struggling as well. I'm not sure I want to go to Manaya here, especially when he's kind of similarly priced to Corbin. I think I'd rather play Corbin. I uh, mentioned Ross Stripling. I think he's a good SP2 here. 7,200 at home versus the Padres. Definitely like Ross Stripling if you want to go to him. And then, that, and then that's really it. Like sub, 
like 7K. I don't really like a lot of their value here. Pitcher for me, it's really Max, Syndergaard, Severino. Uh, and then SP2s, I like Corbin. I think Manaya is fine, but I think I'd rather get up to Corbin. Uh, and then Ross Stripling, definitely a good option. I feel like 7,200. But yeah, guys, I think that's it for pitcher. Now, if we do want to talk about some bats for today, the first guy that I like is at second base. He is a value play here. You can also play him at third base. I uh, like Matt Carpenter at 3,600. Been on him a lot lately just because he's been really cheap. He started to hit the ball well. He's been heating up lately. Kind of cooled off the last two games. But this is definitely a bounce back spot, I feel like, versus Joe Musgrove, a pitcher I don't think is very good. Uh, it was a pitcher I pitched, uh, picked on a lot last year when he was with the Astros. I believe he was with the Astros last year. It might have been the year before that, but Musgrove uh, was a guy that gave up a lot of home runs. He's getting a good park upgrade. Uh, getting to go and pitch in Pittsburgh is going to help him, but I still like some of the lefties here from the Cardinals. Uh, Musgrove's always been a guy that's give, given up home runs. Carpenter has some power versus the righties. He's been hitting the ball well lately and just really started to heat up. So I like him here as a value option, 3,600. Project about second, some good value you can go to, I feel like, at second base and third base. Um, then going to the outfield, looking for two value plays here. Uh, two guys I like from Coors Field that you can go to. Uh, first guy is Gerardo Parra. Uh, he's really cheap at only 3900 in Coors Field versus Sal Romano. Uh, absolutely love the Rockies here. I think they are by far the top stack on the slate. Not really going out on a limb. They have a 6.4 implied run total. Sal Romano is not a good pitcher. The Rockies are going to be got, uh, some, a team you want to get exposure to from top to bottom. You can also look for the value, though, in this lineup. When you start up top, you've got expensive bats like Blackman, Arenado, but squeezed in between them, you got value with Para. Uh, Cargo project about fifth is also 3,900. You got Ian Desmond project about sixth, who is 4K. You can look to the value from Coors Field with Gerardo Para on the rocky side. I really like him here. 3,900 versus a bad righty in Coors Field. I think he makes a lot of sense. Um, then on the other side, the red side, I like Jesse Winker here at 3,800. He's also very cheap. Really didn't get priced up for the Coors Field. I guess he kind of got priced up. I shouldn't say he didn't get priced up because it looks like last game against Pittsburgh, he was 2900 He's now 3800 uh, but he still is cheap for, to be in Coors Field. He's facing John Gray, and I think John Gray is a good pitcher, but I still don't mind picking on him, especially when he's in Coors. Uh, so some of these lefties, really the value here with, like, Winker you could go to. Uh, Tucker Barnhart could be a catcher option. Project about second for 3900 uh, Even, like, Jeanette, I know they're kind of expensive, Jeanette and Votto, but... Two guys I don't mind paying up for. Shebler, 4400 you could look to. Uh, just really like Jesse Winker here, though. Uh, 3800 bat and leadoff, or at least project the bat leadoff. Good value in course field. Just too cheap, in my opinion. Uh, so these are my five plays for today, guys. Noah Syndergaard, Patrick Corbin, Matt Carpenter, Gerardo Parra, and Jesse Winker. Uh, now talking about some stacks on this slate. Uh, obviously, the Rockies are going to be the top stack, but I will uh, kind of exclude them. Just because you know to get exposure to that team. It's going to be hot in Coors Field. It looks like it's going to be 88 degrees. You want exposure to both sides of this game, I feel like. Uh, if you're paying up for pitcher, you can still get some exposure. You can pick up, uh, pick off some of the value plays here with Winker, Para, uh, Gonzalez, Desmond, if you want to do that. Um, but now looking at other teams that we could go to, uh, I do like the Rangers here versus Eric Skoglin. Eric Skoglin, not a good pitcher, a pitcher I don't believe in. Uh, going to be hot in Texas. Going to be a great hitter's park. Uh, good hitting weather. And the Rangers have a 5.6 implied run total for today. You definitely want some exposure to them. They've got value in their lineup as well. With the Shields, uh, Kyra Falifa, Profar you could go to. Even Ryan Rua, uh, if you need really cheap value, 2700 Do like the Rangers here versus Eric Skoglin. Um, looking at other teams, not really a lot I love. Uh, besides really the Rangers and the uh, Coors Field game, you could go to the Red Sox versus Tehran. But with all the good expensive pitching on the slate, it's going to be hard to pay up for that pitching and get the Red Sox in your lineup versus Tehran. Uh, so I'm kind of looking to the Tigers, or not the Tigers, excuse me, the Rangers versus Eric Scoglin, and then going to Coors Field, kind of getting the value plays there so I can fit them in with my expensive pitching. Uh, but yeah, now moving on to BVP for this slate. Looking at BVP plays with a decent sample size. Uh, just a couple that catch my eye. Um, Corey Kluber got roughed up by a couple of these Astros, Marlon Gonzalez has gone 8 for 17 with two home runs versus Kluber. George Springer, 4 for 11 versus Kluber. Uh, a lot of these Marlins have hit Max Scherzer well, which is kind of surprising. Uh, they don't have a ton of hits, at least Bohr and Dietrich don't. They've both gone 3 for 13, uh, but they do both have a home run, 231 average versus Max. Martin Prado's 13 for 31 with the home run versus Max. And Miguel Rojas, 2 for 10, but one of those hits. 
was a home run. Uh, Jonathan Lucroy, only athletic that has hit Corbin Wells, 6 for 15, 400 average. A lot of Dodgers have hit uh, Clayton Richard Wells, so if you want to do like a BVP stack today, you could look to a lot of these Dodgers bats. It looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Dodgers that have hit Richard Well. Austin Barnes, 9 for 15 with the home run. Cody Bellinger, 5 for 12 with the home run. Uh, Logan Forsythe, 6 for 12. Matt Kemp, 35 or 13 for 35 with two home runs. Yasiel Puig, 7 for 19 with two home runs. Chris Taylor, 4 for 10. And Justin Turner, 9 for 19 with the home run. Uh, so all of them have hit Richard well. I do like the Dodgers if you wanted to go to them. I don't think they're my number one stack, but it uh, could be a team you look to. I do believe they have pretty cheap bats if we pull up their projected lineup. Uh, a lot of value in the Dodgers lineup. Nobody is over 4K. Most expensive bats there are Turner and Cody Pelliger. They are both... They're both 4,000 even. Uh, so don't mind the Dodgers versus Stripling, or versus Richard, excuse me, especially with the BVP that they have. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for BVP. Moving on to PVB, the pitchers that I've done well. Uh, James Paxson, only pitcher with a decent sample that has done well in his matchup. Uh, versus the Twins, the Twins are only hitting him for a 206 average. They only have 13 hits through 63 at bats. Uh, Paxson has managed to get 20 strikeouts through 63 at bats versus the Twins. And obviously, with all that Dodgers BVP, They've done uh, well against Clayton Richard. Richard getting roughed up by the Dodgers. He's allowed a 401 average through 152 at, at bats, 61 hits. Uh, seven of those 61 hits were home runs. Dodgers have absolutely torched Clayton Richard. So could look to a Dodger stack today, especially with the BVP. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's it for BVP and PVV on this slate. And I think that is it for this video. Uh, hopefully, you guys did enjoy the video. Hopefully, it helped you. If did enjoy, just make sure you click that like button down below. If you have not subscribed yet make sure you subscribe as well and like always if you have questions you can hit me up on twitter at the dfs underscore goat uh, or feel free to leave a comment down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can uh, but yeah guys i think that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and good luck tonight on this slate guys peace